conversations. See? And uh, that way, if you miss a Wednesday call, uh, you can always review it at a later time. Or if somebody who is usually on this call can't be here, um, you can forward that and let them know uh, that it is available. So welcome. Glad you are here. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Bishop Ahrens. Thank you so much. The, uh, this morning, we'll spend some time dwelling in the passage from 1 Peter, which is uh, one of the options for the reading for this coming Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter. But we'll start our time with an opening prayer, the collect for this coming Sunday. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Passages from 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. Bishop Mello will read the passage the first time, and as you hear it being read, I invite you to explore with the Lord what word or phrase is God calling you to notice? Is there something that God is particularly putting on your heart as you hear this passage being read? Please feel free to share your thoughts and prayers in the chat. I'll read the passage a second time. And as you hear the passage being read the second time, what might you be hearing in this season of Easter? What might God be calling you to try on or explore in a new way as we live into the season of new life and resurrection? Feel free to share your thoughts and prayers in the chat as you like, um, and we'll end our time of dwelling in the Word as we always do with the Lord's Prayer. I'll offer it in English, and uh, Jean-Baptiste Rock will offer the prayer in French, and uh, Michael Carroll will offer the prayer in Spanish, and I invite you to pray the prayer in the language of your heart. Over to you, Bishop Ello. A reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God.
I'm reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke his fa father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You've been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Good reflections in the chat. If I could ask Jean-Baptiste and Michael to uh, unmute. We offer together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. 
Our Father, Padrino nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación, libranos del mal, porque tú eres el reino, tú eres el poder, tú eres la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Amén. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. Thank you, Michael. Thank you all. Such rich time of dwelling in the word. Blessing. Thanks. Thank you, Bishop Barnes. And thank you, everyone. This is the time in our phone call together where it is your questions that we consider, anything that you have on your heart. Uh, we keep sort of announcements for the good old whole for a little bit later in our time together, but this is really to bring anything um, to the, your bishop's attention or to the staff or a question you have about something that's going on in your life or ministry in the parish. Um, and, and all questions are welcome. Uh, this is your time uh, to ask whatever it is that is on your heart. What questions do you bring to our shared time today? Merrick, good morning and welcome. Glad you're here. Good morning, Bishop. Good to see you. Uh, this is Merrick Sabriskie of Christ Church in Greenwich. Um, I've had a parishioner that gets very heated uh, recently about changing any pronouns for God. He believes it should always be him, et cetera. Um, we tend to change those to God and uh, not give God a masculine identity. That's been going on at Christ Church since at least 2017, according to one of our staff members, before I got there. Um, and I believe that in most, you know, all national uh, liturgies and things, the same thing happens. Um, do you have any response to that? This person, I think, is kind of caught up in how, uh, especially, you know, conservative news stations are talking about the changing of pronouns and, and identifying of pronouns. Um, universities and schools and just thinks that this is a slippery slope that the church if it goes down this route will you know who knows where it will lead to so any response that you would uh share that's great and thank you merrick for asking those important questions and there are a number of questions of course in your question uh, one is the long tradition we have uh about wrestling with any um gendering of god which of course we did first right like so giving god uh, uh different genders is is something that humans have done since we started talking about god god uh we named god he or him at some point um in history and so um this is always any we know this right this is not a new conversation for us as people of faith that anytime we even begin to talk about the divine, we fall short. We, it's, it's a losing battle right from the beginning because God is um, beyond um, any human categories or anthropological um, uh, categories. Um, so, uh, and so I, I think this is a, a bigger, as, as the um, comment in the chat just posted, this is a bigger question about than what's currently happening in our uh, uh, political uh, discourse, if we can call it, I think discourse sometimes is optimistic about how these conversations are happening, but um, but is is bigger than that and and longer than that. Um, and so, how we think about gender for God in church matters, um, and it is always an ongoing um, uh, conversation. Uh, research, uh, of course, uh, theological research. You can probably find research to support. Uh, what it is you think going into exploring uh, the research, but there's lots of great research out there for um, how we think about gendered language for God, particularly, uh, uh, of course, as it relates to the Holy Spirit um, and uh, for breath. Um, and so how we, uh, how we, you're getting a lot of great comments uh, in, in the chat. And I 
encourage this conversation to uh, continue. You know, Jesus, uh, uh, the, the image of uh, a mother hen gathering her children, right? So there's plenty of opportunity for that. I think what I hear in perhaps your um, uh, parishioners uh, question is how it intersect, how they're hearing it perhaps anew, given the current political uh, discourse around um, our transgender and non-binary siblings in Christ um, and how it is getting politicized um, and used as, um, as a conversation in the political sphere. So I would hope uh, a first response is to separate those two things that both are important, but but we shouldn't uh, make God uh, a target of uh, of our other uh, human uh, failings and, and shortcomings around other uh, matters that of of human dignity. Um, and I think folks are hearing that anew in light of that. Uh, so then there's a response about what is happening um, about gender identity and uh, the use of pronouns. I, I have a lot to say on that. Um, I have uh, experience in my own life in ministry um, about this and, um, and know it to be a life-saving conversation. This is nothing short of a life-saving conversation. And we can not understand it, and we can wrestle with it, and we can wonder about it, and it can seem odd and foreign to us because it is not our experience. Uh, but as First Peter reminds us, uh, our God is a God of no uh, partiality, uh, that this is uh, something that all of God's beloved children uh, can claim for themselves their identity as beloved children of God. Um, and that if we take seriously the love and care of our young people in particular, uh, that this is something we want to be thinking very carefully um, about. How we invite folks into this conversation uh, is important as well, that we're not shaming or blaming or othering folks because of their different experiences or uh, folk place on the journey or, or, or wonderings, uh, but engaging in deep, heartfelt, and theological um, conversations. So I guess I'm not sure that even answers your question, Mark, about how to respond in this particular case. Uh, but again, tons of resources uh, around uh, how we have always used gendered language or non-gendered language. or uh, And and I guess I'll, I'll want to say, because I haven't had an opportunity to say this uh, in front of folks before, is that I have always been um, longing for uh, expansive language uh, in our liturgy rather than simply um, settling for inclusive language, right? So inclusive language is trying to piece together, you know, um, lots of uh, multiple ways. But I think there's an even more expansive way of approaching this uh, that doesn't betray our theological understanding for God and the divine, but invites us to a to a fuller understanding. So that's one response. And the other is to think about how we want to be having these conversations or um, specifically about the current conversations in our uh, public discourse about gender and gender identity um, in ways that hold first and foremost our commitment to respect the dignity of every human being um, as, a, as a, first, uh, a first goal in that. Is that at all helpful, Merrick, or a place to start? No, no, it certainly is. Um, why I mentioned conservative is that this couple's been coming to church for three years with us and then only now raising this and suggested that we had recently made this change as part of kind of a movement. And, and I said, you know, that's not the case. That's right. Actually, it's difficult in pastoral situations like this where people get so charged by it. Mm -hmm. um, and as one... Uh, conservative uh you know evangelical pastor in our community says before i you know my people get to us in church on sunday they've been uh they've been uh schooled for 10 hours through the mass media mm -hmm. so it's, yeah. it's a challenge sometimes you know if we could have a very open conversation i think it would be one thing if if it's uh you better stop this or else it's it's a harder conversation mm -hmm. But thank yeah. you. Most yeah, of course. And remember, Jesus models for us, come and see. Yeah. Right. Come and be in relationship. Come and see. Come and and, and witness and and hear. 
Thanks, Thank Mark. You. Appreciate all the comments in the chat as well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, one of my questions was going to be, does anybody know who the uh, the winner in the Episcopal clergy division at the Boston Marathon would be? And I see that Margie Baker is with us. Is that what is that what you're on here to talk about, Margie? Congratulations on running such a, a great run on Monday. I'm sorry if I'm embarrassing you. You are amazing, Margie. Amazing. Um, thank you, bishops. Um, yeah, I ran and I'm walking today, and that's amazing. Uh -huh. Um, Margie Baker, St. John's West Hartford. I um I wanted to thank you for your words about um about gendered language, um, et cetera. And I had a question. Um, about specifically about Eucharistic prayer B, um, because it says um, the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Um, and we've just, I mean, this is also a mea culpa, but like we prefer children <laughs> there mm -hmm. because sons and daughters doesn't fit everybody at our parish. And I just wanted to see, um, I just wanted to ask about those sorts of tweaks that aren't changing the theology of our public prayer but are making it um, better fit our pastoral situations. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so this is a great question. And I also commend particularly for A, B, and D, the new inclusive versions of those uh, Eucharistic prayers. This is one of those places where, you know, our Eucharistic prayers um, are, some are, are uh, you know, D is ancient and common and uh, others continue to grow and evolve as we understand our relationships with one another and with God differently. Uh, that's why we have Eucharistic Prayer C, uh, which still calls me right back to, uh, to middle school um, in its language and uh, first notions of care and creation and the, the notion of earth as our island home. Um, and so some of our language, uh, you know, uh, not too long ago, it wouldn't have been sons and daughters. Um, it would have been sons. Um, and so we continue to evolve and grow. Um, I, I will say that uh, I want us to be very intentional and careful um, and, and thoughtful and all the synonyms for those um, when approaching liturgy and thinking carefully about what it is we are teaching and thinking um, we are saying uh, when we look at language for, for liturgy and what binds us together as a people of common prayer. Um, and that being said, I think where there are uh, places to be more expansive in our language, I would encourage everyone to lean into that as it feels right and good in your local context. And I would ask us to be careful about changing words that are in authorized liturgies of the Episcopal Church. And those are conversations Bishop Laura and I are excited and happy to have on a case by case basis with folks. So thank you. Good morning, Matt. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, there is a question in the chat. Uh, where can we get the inclusive versions of those prayers? Great. Um, you can find them in two places. One is on the ECCT website under the liturgy, approved liturgy resources, um, and the other is, uh, so General Convention just created a new website. I believe it is called www.commonprayer.org. I'm hoping that is right. Um, and just so you know, anything that is approved, no, it is not true, Archie is saying. All right, we'll get that. I'll find that resource and we'll make sure we get it out. Um, I saw that uh, Dean Lena put Anglican.org, but um, that that might be a better resource. But there's a whole page that says here are the approved resources for liturgy. Here are the approved trial use liturgies. Uh, oh, there it is. EpiscopalCommonPrayer.org. Thank you. Um, Prayer.org is the 1928, which you are also welcome to use on occasion with permission. Um, so there's a whole list of approved liturgical resources, approved trial use uh, resources, and it also tells you what each of those categories mean. Anything that is approved by ECCT, uh, by uh, Tech, uh, the Episcopal Church for regular use or trial use is approved for use in ECCT. So you do not have to write for permission to use anything that's an approved liturgical resource like enriching our worship. Um, so that that's a place to start but it has the 
the inclusive A, B, and D uh, versions there. Thank you. Daniel, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Daniel Simons from St. Paul's on the Green in Norwalk. And uh, this is uh, an announcement. I want to invite everyone here to the uh, celebration of new ministry that we're holding here um, on May 2nd. So two weeks from yesterday, 7 p.m. I'd love to have you here. And if you're online, uh, it's, you can participate that way too. We'll live stream it. Um, so let me know if you'd like to come and keep me in prayer and keep us in prayer. It's been a, a wonderful ride and uh, the journey continues. Thank you, Daniel. Congratulations. Thank you. Lots of good resources for liturgy popping up in the chat. Other questions for our common life? These have been rich and good. So thank you. If there aren't other questions right now, I'd like to invite uh, Matt Handy back on for Matt's stats. And we are thinking we will continue to do this probably through the end of the program year uh, and then reevaluate at that time uh, as, you know, if there are fluxes or uh, noticeable changes for how we are gathering together, we'll bring that back to you. But um, we will continue Matt's stats through uh, the end of the program year, we are thinking. Uh, Matt, before you come on, I just see uh, Jillian has raised their hand. Jillian? Thank you. Uh, Jillian Barr, Rector of Calvary Church in Stonington. Uh, are we going to get an update sometime on this call or soon about the status of clergy conference, or have I zoned out on other emails that give more details? That's all my question. Everything you are ever going to want to know about clergy conferences headed your way very shortly in this conversation, Jillian. Thank you. Excellent. Yep, you bet. Thank you. Matt. Good morning again. <laughs> and here we are. Um, so uh, last week on this heat map, I mentioned that we, uh, uh, while cities and towns do appear in dark blue, um, the numbers are changing within the, that range. So this is um, from January, th this map here. And um, we see that the highest number of cases was 158 in these dark blue areas, uh, Bridgeport and New Haven. Well, we still have dark blue um, in uh, our most recent look. Uh, however, the highest number of concentrated case concentration is 18. And that does center around New Haven, a an urban area. But the, the tone of the map is changing. Um, Towns in gray are, are hardly have any cases, uh, and the towns in the lighter colors uh, range from five uh, and above. So we're, we're looking at five to 18 rather than the 159 we're looking at. Just wanted to show that just to um, give an example of the improvement we're seeing in the number of cases. Also, we have a, a downward trend from January where we had 761 folks and uh, hospitalized for COVID. Um, we are now down to 108 with a low of last um, April 12th of 91. Looking at the percent positive, um, we are at a 3.29% positive um, with a our, down from our spike in January of 17.36%. Those are the stats. Thank you. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Matt. And um, as Marta noted in the chat, but we're also hearing from other places that there, of course, continue to be areas where there are outbreaks of cases. Um, uh, so it's not gone. It is still with us, uh, but uh, grateful that it is not nearly at the numbers it had been um, in recent history. So we continue to be careful. Uh, we continue to be thoughtful. We continue to monitor um, and continue to care and love for one another. Matt, would you be willing to come back on and give us the exciting news about the new bishop's uh, visitation jot form? Everybody has been on the edge of their seats for this. So, um, yes, I, I think that is true. People have been on the edge of their sheets, seats, and uh, if I can find the correct window, I'll bring that up. So here we go. Um, so the purpose of this form uh, is for preparation uh, for Episcopal visitations. Um, a link to this form will be sent out to each parish uh, sometime prior to that visitation. 
I just wanted to show you an example of uh, what we're looking at. Uh, so yeah, you will get the link and uh, you enter into the form uh, and you select which parish you are. Um, just random, we're going to Clinton and the Church of the Holy Advent. Now you wanna name the um, which bishop is visiting, uh, whether Bishop Aarons or Mello, uh, we'll choose Bishop Aarons. What will pop up then is the bishop's assistance contact information. Uh, sort of a just a um, easy access um, thing there and then you want to um, enter uh, who you are um, and there we go a your test asdf uh, so you go on to the priest you can enter the phone number you're we're looking for the email the date of the visitation and the service time now you we're you know you can have uh, one um, service uh, that you would wish the bishop to attend, and that can be your 10 a.m. Sorry. Uh, and then if you do have two services that you'd like your the bishop to attend, um, just click yes. Now, if there is more than one service, we do ask that you be in touch with the bishop's assistant just to make sure that they understand that there is going to be more than one. Um, and so we we have all of that. Um, what time should the bishop arrive for their visitation? Um, half hour before, 15 minutes before. Some parishes, um, the parking isn't quite obvious. Sometimes folks drive by the parish and uh, sort of miss that hidden driveway. So if there's any um, instructions you can give to driving uh, or parking, uh, please let us know. Are there any COVID protocols? Do you still mask? Um, do you um, distance all of that? Uh, let us know there. Are there any baptisms? Are there any confirmations? Uh, which rite will be used? And we have uh, what I think is a exhaustive list of uh, the rites um, offered and also uh, if there's any uh, alternative liturgies that might be used. What is the color of the day? Um, what are the propers for the day? Prayers of the people. Now here, um, uh, we are going to have, I just realized I, I forgot to add a little bit of a piece, but if you write your own prayers of the people, we'll ask you to uh, upload those just so we can be uh, prepared and um, be able to, to read those. And what is the preface? Will there be time with children? Uh, will there be a coffee hour? Will there be a lunch or reception? What time should we meet with the vestry? And then finally, um, is there any inf information you wish to share? Once this is completed, you hit submit and it will go to the bishops and the bishop's assistant. Uh, this is uh, taking the place of the paper form that we used to rely on. Uh, so it should help ease the conversation for those pre-visitation meetings. And that is it. I'm gonna stop sharing just to see if there are any questions, uh, comments, suggestions, and if not, thank you. Any questions or comments for Matt? I want to publicly thank you, Matt, for putting this job form together. This was, um, we asked Matt to look at that um, uh, form and see if we could make uh, it easier for folks to engage with and a little bit more simplified. And I think he's come up with a great, great option that will reduce some of the cumbersome nature of the paper forms. So thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Great. Any other questions from Matt? Great. Announcements for the good of the church. Dean Lena, good morning. Oh, sorry, uh, Lena, before you come on, just let me answer. The form will be mailed to all parishes prior to a visitation. Um, and it will be posted on the website. Um, so you'll be able to find it in both places, or you can always contact um, either Allison or Trish, um, and they can send you out a link to the to the job form. Great question. Thank you. The visitation schedule is also something you can, if you don't have that, um, you can write to Trish and or Allison, um, and we can get that out to you as well. Dean Lena. Good morning. Good morning, Bishop Melo. 
I'm just seeing Trish and, and um, Alison smiling big time. <laughs> this would make their life so much easier. <laughs> um, I am um, announcing um, on behalf of the Racial Healing Justice and Reconciliation Ministry Network that we still have um, seats on the bus for the pilgrimage that is happening this Saturday. I'm putting the information on the chat. And I tried to put the link to the Eventbrite, but that didn't work. Um, the pilgrimage is um, to the Black Heritage Trail in the Museum of African American History in Boston. And the bus is departing from the parking lot at the Commons. And, and there's still um, seats available. There are like 30 people and we have, we have space for 10 more at least. So please do join us or join them. I'm in California right now. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Bishop Barons. Thanks. Uh, I'm not in the office today. I'm working from home because I have a college for bishop, bishops board meeting uh, that, that begins early this morning and goes through the afternoon. So, um, but it's great to be here on Zoom with all of you um, from my home. The announcement I want to make is um, the archdeacons and others in province one, the New England diocese, have declared June 4th Deacons Sunday. You'll be hearing more about this through the e-news, um, but we've decided that this that June 4th would be a great Sunday to either have a deacon preach in your church or to preach about the diaconate. And it could be a priest or a layperson preaching about the diaconate. There are some resources that you'll be receiving through the e-news uh, to tell you a little bit more about the Sunday and uh, the diaconate in general. And if you can't do it on June 4th, feel free to transfer the feast. Um, it's a wonderful ministry to uh, share and talk about and explore in all of your parishes. Um, and so perhaps you want to ask a deacon to come, but a deacon is already uh, booked on June 4th. Um, you can transfer the feast to another day and uh, have a deacon come preach or just pick another day to preach about the diaconate as a way to faithfully serve the Lord and how deacons empower all of us in our ministries, particularly in servanthood. Um, so it should be a, a great Sunday. Uh, June 4th is the Sunday we're recognizing, but there's, um, it, as I said, it is a transferable feast. And I just want to give a shout out to all the deacons in Connecticut and in Province 1 and in Tech. Uh, they really are an important voice for us as we seek to uh, share the love of Jesus with the world. So shout out to the deacons. June 4th, Deacon Sunday. Thank you, Bishop. Lisa, good morning. Good morning, Bishop. Uh, Lisa Hunneman, um, St. John's New Milford, priest in charge. However, today with my clergy conference planning team member hat on. And thank you, Jillian. Um, we know that clergy are solely focused during Lent, Holy Week, and Easter, so you have not missed anything. Our clergy conference is coming up on uh, May 15th through the 17th. It's Monday afternoon to a Wednesday midday. The Eventbrite information um, should be available today. If Trish is, has a chance to get it up, there it is right there. Um, so you have not missed anything. However, we need um, registration by May 1st. So you have a few weeks. Um, as has been mentioned on this call before, our keynoter is um, Dr. Allison St. Louis. Um, she is going to be taking us through hope and healing um, in life and ministry, which is basically three days of being with our, our fellow clergy, um, reminding ourselves what we know and forget to practice. And that really is a lot about how to breathe um, with a great deal of hope um, and reminding ourselves of the great cloud of witnesses we have around us. Um, for our lay people who are on this call, we know that you also are in great need of finding ways to breathe and heal. And all I can say at this point is if you will do everything you can to encourage any clergy you know to come to this, I am hoping that their renewal and um, finding ways to breathe will be brought back to you um, and be very uplifting in your time together. Um, for new clergy, please remember that you um, have a continuing ed budget, um, and this is how this is um, this comes under that as part of continuing ed. Um, and thanks to Bishop Mello, um, 
we have been able to get the registration costs lower than we ever have. Um, so it's only $100 for three days, in addition to then um, the cost at um, the group rate that the Inn at Middletown is offering us. Um, so please, please, please um, come join us. Um, we need this time together um, and to regroup, to, re to breathe, and to, um, especially for our new folks, come meet the incredible um, clergy peers, colleagues that you have and help us get to know you um, and see where we go next with all of this. Uh, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, I'm really excited about this time together. I love um, clergy conference always have. I'm excited for this, which would be my first uh, with you all, and I look forward to being with you and uh, Bishop Ahrens as we uh, continue to chart the next uh, parts of our course in, in shared ministry together. We do really want everybody who can. We know that it's uh, during the week, uh, so that doesn't work for a lot of clergy who work during during the week. We're, we're looking at other options for other formation opportunities as well. But if this does work for you, uh, please don't let anything, including the cost, um, get in your way of attending. And if uh, finances are a barrier, uh, please be in touch with either Bishop Ahrens or uh, with me. Um, and we want to make sure we do everything we can to, to, to make it possible for everybody uh, to be there. Thank you again, Lisa. Marta, good morning. Good morning. Marta Rivera today wearing my Hispanic Ministry Network hat. Um, if you are interested in racial healing and justice and not interested in going to Boston, also this Saturday, we have our celebration of Spanish speaking ministries in ECCT. Uh, shout out to the planning crew. We have been months in the making of this. All are welcome. It's a bilingual event. It's going to be at St. John's Waterbury, 10 to two this Saturday. I'm posting uh, information in the chat. Um, there's going to be, we're going to have some conversations about the joys and challenges of Spanish speaking ministry in the diocese. And we're going to have a wonderful worship service with several receptions, which is very exciting. Um, Bishop Mello is going to be there and there's going to be music and there's going to be food. Uh, there's going to be a lot of food and you can also bring more food. <laughs> um, we are, I posted a link to a folder of publicity information, but also a list of uh, the organizations that the offering for that day is going to benefit. We haven't done a great job on publicity on this part, but we are asking that people bring in kind donations rather than money for the offering. Um, we're benefiting of three different wonderful local organizations in Waterbury for, with this event and hopefully we'll be able to give them a lot of good things that they need. Um, so April 22nd, 10 to four, St. John's Waterbury. There's also a map, a little map that points out where St. John's Waterbury is in that folder. Um, and please everybody come out. It's It should be really good and we're really looking forward to it. Thank you, Marta. Merrick, welcome back. Thank you, Bishop. Just a little, uh, sharing to the group that um, under the leadership of the Reverend Dr. Uh, Cheryl McFadden on Saturday, we're hosting a women's conference and the keynote is Bishop Laura Ahrens, my classmate from seminary. So we're thrilled to have you joining us, Bishop Ahrens. We have, uh, I believe, 16 different speakers and about 150 people coming. Anyone else who wants to join, please uh, sign up right away because there are a few spots left. And tomorrow night, we have uh, Michael Bamberger, probably the best golf writer in the country, uh, coming to speak. He's an old friend. And we have a miniature golf course set up inside the church hallways. It'll just be fun. But we found like putting together activities like that have brought in a lot of people who don't come to church. And we've seen a great membership spike as a result of building community. So all that's open to anyone. Thanks. Thank you, Mary. Mary, good morning. Good morning, um, Mary Barnett, Church of the Holy Trinity in Middletown, and um, I'm part of that um, clergy conference uh, team and just want to welcome you to Church of the Holy Trinity. And after we all learn how to breathe and relax on Tuesday night, um, we are going to have the big green pizza truck at Church of the Holy Trinity and the praise band on the stage. So all of you come just also have some fun in Middletown. 
Um, I also wanted to say that after the conference, right after the conference, if you're interested in joining me and being a presence at the Pride Parade in June, I thought we could have a meeting upstairs with the dance group who might help us uh, uh, think together about how we might be a presence together in the Pride Parade and let the world know that we are a both a inclusive and liturgical church as we march in that parade. I have some ideas and we can just go right upstairs after the Eucharist at Holy Trinity and maybe the dancers can, can help us think how we might be, be unified and have some fun together on June 3rd in Middletown. Thank you, Mary. Um, there was a question about deadlines for clergy conference. Trish, are you, I know, there's one for, oh, there we go, right there. If you're not staying at the hotel, the deadline is May 8th. And if you are staying at the hotel, they need the guarantee by May 1st. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to the clergy conference uh, planning team. Um, it's been great to see this come together and uh, really, I think, will be a great gift, as is uh, spring training and gathering which is going on right now um thank you to everyone who is uh offering and attending that i'm really looking forward to saturday the 29th when mary foster palmer will be with us uh talking about invite welcome and connect as we enter this uh new time um, as some places are seeing people uh creep back in and curious about what goes on in that Episcopal Church in town, or maybe community is exactly what God is calling them into uh, after some time of isolation and separation. Uh, it will be great to be energized and sent forth to do that kind of uh, expansive and radical, uh, radical inviting and then welcoming and connecting those deeper into uh, our lives and community. So I hope you will be with us. Um, I think it will be a great time in the church. Anything else, any questions or announcements for the good of the whole that we've missed? A lot happening in the life of the ECCT as we bask in the glow, continued glow of the resurrection. Clergy Conference is at the Middletown Inn. Inn at Middletown. Good. Well, why don't we pray out together? Bishop, will you offer the closing prayer? Sure. I was pulling uh, this together yesterday and thinking about um, yesterday being pay your taxes day, if you last day to do that in a timely fashion. Um, and uh, I came upon a prayer by Walter Brueggemann about income tax day. So let us pray. On this day of eternal internal revenue, some of us are paid up, some of us owe, some of us await a refund, some of us have no income to tax. But all of us are taxed by war, by violence, by anxiety, by deathliness. And Caesar never gives any deep tax relief. We render to Caesar. To some, it feels like a grab. To some, it is clearly a war tax. To some, some few, it is a way to contribute to the common good. In any case, we are haunted by what we render to Caesar, by what we re might render to you, by the way we invest our wealth and our lives, when what you ask is an easy yoke to do justice, love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. Give us courage for your easy burden so to live untaxed lives. Amen. Friends, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, eternal majesty, incarnate word, and abiding spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you again for this sacrifice of time and presence. Uh, we are so grateful to each one of you. A note on that prayer that Bishop Ahrens wrote, that is Walter Brueggemann from uh, Prayers for Privileged People, uh, a great book of, uh, of prayers, if you haven't come across it yet. There it is. Spectacular book. Thank you, everyone. Take care. God bless.